Hi guys, this is Zuleika from Edureka. In today's session, we're going to discuss about one of the most popular DevOps tools, which is Docker. Now, Docker is one of the best containerization platforms out there. And today we're specifically going to discuss about Docker for Windows. Now let's move ahead and look at today's agenda. We're going to begin with why use Docker for Windows. We're going to look at the prerequisites and we'll also see what tools are installed along with Docker. Next, we'll look at what is Docker and we'll discuss a few Docker terminologies like Docker images, Docker containers, Docker compose and Docker swarm. Then we'll move on to the demo where I'll show you how to install Docker for Windows and we'll run a few basic Docker commands and we'll also build a simple Python web application on Docker containers and run it using Docker compose. I hope all of you are clear with the agenda. Let's get started with our first topic. So why should we use Docker for Windows? Now the first reason is that it avoids the work on my machine but doesn't work on the production problem. All right. Now this problem occurs due to the inconsistent environment throughout the software development workflow. Now for example, let's say that a developer has built an application on Windows environment and when he sends the application to the testing server, it fails to run. Now this happens because the testing server operates on an outdated version of Windows. Now obviously the application does not support the dependencies needed to run on the outdated version of Windows. So because of the difference in the software versions in the development and testing server, the application will fail. But when it comes to Docker, we can run our application within a container which contains all the dependencies of the application and the container can be run throughout the software development cycle. Now this practice provides a consistent environment throughout. Now apart from that, it improves productivity. So by installing Docker on Windows, we're running Docker natively. If you've been following Docker for a while, you know that Docker containers originally supported only Linux operating systems. But later Docker made its platform available for other operating systems, but with a simple limitation. Now the limitation was that Docker engine ran inside a Linux based virtual machine image on top of the operating system. So basically you could run Docker from Windows or any other operating system except Linux was still the middleman. But thanks to the recent release, Docker can now natively run on Windows, which means that Linux support is not needed. Instead, the Docker container will run on Windows kernel itself. All right. So guys, just like I mentioned earlier, Docker for Windows supports native networking. Now, not only the Docker container, the entire Docker toolset is now compatible with Windows. This includes the Docker CLI, Docker Compose, data volumes, and all of the other building blocks for Dockerized infrastructure, which are now compatible with Windows. But how is this advantageous? Now, since all the Docker components are locally compatible with Windows, they can run with minimal computational overhead. Now let's move on to the prerequisites. So before you install Docker for Windows, you need to check if you're running on a Windows 10 Pro Edition Enterprise Education Student Edition 64 bit system. Now guys, a point to note here is that Docker will not run on any other Windows version. So if you're running on an older Windows version, you can install the Docker toolbox instead. Okay. Now Docker for Windows requires a type one hypervisor and in the case of Windows, it's called the Hyper-V. Now what is Hyper-V? Hyper-V is basically a lightweight virtualization solution built on top of the hypervisor framework. So you don't need a virtual box. You just have to enable hypervisor. All right. And also you need to enable the virtualization in BIOS. Now, when you install Docker for Windows, by default, all of this is enabled. But in case you're facing any issue during installation, please check if your Hyper-V and your virtualization is enabled. All right. Moving on. So guys, when you install Docker, these components are also installed automatically. So first we have the Docker engine. Now guys, whenever we say Docker, we actually mean Docker engine. Now the Docker engine basically contains the Docker daemon, REST API for interacting with the Docker daemon and a command line interface client that communicates with the daemon. Now Docker daemon accepts Docker commands such as Docker run, Docker build and all of that from the Docker client. All right. Now the next component is Docker compose. Docker compose is basically used to run multiple Docker containers at once. Now we'll be discussing more about this in the further slides. After that, we have the Docker machine. Now Docker machine is used to install the Docker engine. It is basically what you install on your local system. Okay. Docker machine has its own client known as a Docker machine and a Docker engine client known as Docker. All right. 
Now, at last, we have Kitematic. Now, what is Kitematic? Kitematic is an open source project built to simplify the use of Docker on Windows. It basically helps to automate the installation of Docker and it also provides a very interactive user interface for running Docker containers. All right. So it's more like a UI tool. All right, guys. Now let's look at what is Docker. Docker is a containerization platform that runs applications within containers. Now, Docker containers are quite lightweight when you compare them to virtual machines. So when I say lightweight, I mean that when you install a virtual machine on your system, it uses the guest operating system on top of your host operating system. Now, this obviously takes up a lot of resources like this space, RAM and etc. But when it comes to a Docker container, it uses the host operating system itself. Okay. Now, Docker containers contain the application you want to run along with all of the dependencies that are needed to run the application. So this way you're safe from all of the dependency issues. All right. Now in the image, you can see that there is a host operating system on top of which there is a Docker engine mounted. All right. Now the Docker engine basically runs container number one and container number two. Now both of these containers might have different applications and each application has its own libraries and packages installed within the container. Now let's look at Docker images. Now, how are Docker images created? In order to create Docker images, you create a file called Docker file. Now, within the Docker file, you define all the dependencies and packages that are needed by your application. Now, every time you run a Docker image, it runs as a Docker container. So a Docker container is basically the runtime instance of a Docker image. Now, a Docker container can have more than a single Docker image. It can have layers of Docker images depending on your application. Now let's look at the Docker registry. Now Docker has its own registry known as Docker Hub. Now Docker Hub is basically where you store all your Docker images. Now these images can be pulled from the remote server and then they can be run locally on your system. In fact, you can also push the Docker images that you have created onto Docker Hub and you can share it with other users on Docker Hub. So in short, Docker Hub is basically the storage house for all your Docker images. Now let's look at what is Docker Swarm. Now, Docker Swarm is a technique to create and maintain a cluster of Docker engines. Now, when I say a cluster of Docker engines, it means that there are multiple Docker engines connected to each other, forming a network. And now this network of Docker engines is called a Docker Swarm. Exactly like what is shown in the image, there are several Docker engines which are connected to each other and they form a Docker network. All right. Now, here you can see that there is a Docker manager. And this Docker manager is basically responsible for initiating the whole Docker swarm. And these other nodes have different services running on them. Now, the main goal of a Docker manager is to make sure that the applications or the services are running effectively on the Docker nodes. All right. Now, let's take a look at Docker Compose. Now, Docker Compose is used to run multiple containers at once. So, guys, let's say that you have three applications in three different containers and you want to execute them at once. This is where Docker Compose comes in. You can run multiple applications in different containers at once. To do this, you'll have to use a single command, which is docker hyphen compose up. Now let's look at the example in the figure. I'm basically running three applications, web app, Postgres and Redis on three different Docker containers. Now all of this is defined in a YAML file, which is basically the Docker Compose file. Now in order to run these containers together, you can use the docker hyphen compose up command. So basically a single command can be used to run multiple containers at once. Okay, so guys, this is how Docker Compose works. Now let's move on to the demo. So we're going to begin with installing Docker for Windows. Now before we go ahead, guys, you have to make sure that you're using a Windows 10 Pro, Enterprise Education or Student Edition. One more important point to note here is that if you're using a virtual box on your system, you won't be able to run it because a virtual box will not work with the hypervisor enabled. But in order for your Docker for Windows to work on your system, the hypervisor must be enabled. So guys, basically you cannot run Docker for Windows and a virtual box on the same system side by side. Okay, so if you have a virtual box in your system, it's not going to work because you'll be enabling your hypervisor. So let's get started by installing Docker for Windows. Now, in order to install Docker for Windows, you need the Docker for Windows installer. Now, I'll leave a link in the description box so that you can download the installer. So guys, I've already installed the Docker for Windows installer. You all can go ahead and download it from the link in the description.
Now here you can see that I've run the installer. So now let's just wait for the installation to complete. Okay, now let's just click on OK. All right, so it's unpacking files. All right, so the installation is completed. So guys, once you've installed it, just open the Docker for Windows app. All right, it's here on my desktop. So when you try to start the application, you'll see a whale icon on the status bar. All right, here you can see the whale icon. Now, when the whale icon becomes stable, it means that Docker has started and you can start working on it. Okay. So this icon needs to get stable. That means that Docker has started. All right. So you can see a message popped up like this. Okay. It says Docker is now up and running. All right. So guys, you can either log into your Docker Hub account from here or you can use the Docker login command and log in. All right. I'm going to go ahead and log into my Docker Hub account. So now you all can open up any terminal and start running Docker commands. So guys, I'm going to be using Windows PowerShell. Now make sure you run as an administrator because there are a lot of commands which require admin access. Okay. Let's say yes. All right. Now in order to check if we've successfully installed Docker, what we're going to do is we're going to check the version of Docker. So the command for checking the version is Docker space hyphen hyphen version. All right. So it's returning the version of Docker that I've installed which means that we've successfully installed Docker. Okay. So now that we know Docker is successfully installed, let's run a few basic Docker commands. Okay. So let me just clear the terminal. Now I'm going to run Docker run. Hello world. Now this is the most basic Docker command that's run once you install Docker. Okay. So I'm basically going to run the hello world image. Now let's see what happens. So it's unable to find image locally. So it's going to pull the hello world image from Docker Hub. Okay. All right. So this basically gives a hello from Docker message. So we finished the first command. Now let's try something different. Yeah. So you use Docker images command to check the images that you have in your system. Since we just ran this hello world image from Docker Hub, we have this image in our repository. All right. Now let's pull a Docker image from Docker Hub. Okay. Now in order to do that, you just use a simple command called docker pull and the name of the image that you want to pull. All right, so I'm going to pull an Ubuntu image. Let's see how it works. So it's basically pulling Ubuntu image from Docker Hub. All right, now let's run this image. So guys, do you remember that I said that whenever you run a Docker image, it runs as a Docker container. So whenever I perform this command docker run hyphen it hyphen D and name of the image. All right. So whenever I use Docker run and I run an image, it's basically going to create a container from this image. Okay. So it's going to create an Ubuntu container. All right. Now the next command is Docker space PS hyphen A. Now basically this will show all the containers. All right. So basically we have two containers over here because we ran both of these images. All right. So whenever you run an image, it runs as a container. That's exactly what I told you earlier. Okay, let's clear this. Now let me type this out and then I'll tell you what this does. All right. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just accessing a running container. Okay, this is the container ID, which is basically the Ubuntu image that we pulled. So I'm basically giving the container ID of this Ubuntu image that we pulled. Now we're basically within the container. Okay, you can perform commands like let's say echo hello. All right, so it says hello. Now what you can do is you can just exit from here. All right, so you come out of the container. Okay, now let's try to stop a running container. Okay, let's say docker stop and the container ID. All right, so it stopped that container. Okay, all right, so the next command is docker commit. Okay, let me just type this out and then I'll tell you what it does. Okay, so basically I'm using the docker commit command. So basically it's going to create a new image on the local system. So after docker commit, I have the container ID and I'm going to create an image out of this. And after a space, I've mentioned Zuleika slash Ubuntu. Now Zuleika is basically the name of my docker hub repository and Ubuntu is the name of the image. All right, so let's see what happens. So basically we created a new image over here. So here you can see that there's another image which is added which is Zuleika hyphen Ubuntu. Okay, it has a new image ID and so on. All right, 
Now, guys, if you perform this command without logging into Docker Hub, they're going to ask you to log in first. Okay, and for that, you can use the command which is Docker login. All right. Now, I've already logged in earlier in the session. So that's why it says login succeeded. Otherwise, it's going to ask you for your credentials. All right. It's going to ask you for your username and your password. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to push this image to Docker Hub. So we're going to use a Docker push command along with the name of my Docker Hub repository and the image name. All right, so it's preparing and it's going to push this image to Docker Hub. All right, now let's say that you want to delete a container. So what you can do is you can use the Docker RM command. So basically the command goes Docker RM and the container ID. Okay, all right, now let's look at our containers. Now we have only one container. So basically the container with container ID this got deleted. Okay. Similarly, you can also remove Docker images. All right. So first let's look at the Docker image ID that you want to remove. All right. Let's say I want to remove Zuleika Ubuntu. Okay. I'm just going to use this image ID and the command is Docker RMI and the image ID. Now let's look at the Docker images. Now you can see only Ubuntu and Hello World is there. So this is how you remove Docker images and I also showed you how to remove Docker containers. So those of you who weren't familiar with Docker have a good idea of how simple Docker commands work. Now if you all want a more in-depth video about Docker and Docker commands, I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can go ahead and watch that content. All right, so now I'm going to create a simple Python web application using Docker Compose. Okay, now let me tell you a little bit about this application. It basically uses Flask framework and it maintains a hit counter in Redis. So guys, for those of you who don't know what Flask is, it is basically a web development framework which is written in Python. And Redis is an in-memory storage component. It is basically used as a database. Okay. Now guys, don't worry if you don't know Python. This program is very understandable. So we're basically going to use a Docker Compose to run two services, which is web service and Redis service. Now what this application does is it's going to maintain a hit counter every time you access a web page. So each time you access the website, a hit counter gets incremented. Okay, it's simple logic. Just increment the value of the hit counter when the web page is accessed. Okay. All right. So let's begin with creating a directory for your application. It's always a good practice to have a directory which stores all of your code. All right. So let's start with creating a directory. Let's say web application. All right. Now I'm going to change to that directory. So guys, I've already typed out the entire code because I didn't want to waste a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the files and I'll explain what the code does. All right. So I have all of my code written in Notepad++. So I'm just opening up Notepad. Also, guys, I want to tell you that you don't have to install Python or Redis. We're just going to use Docker images for Python and Redis. Okay. So first what you have to do is you have to create a Python file. Okay. I've called it web app. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time over here. I'll just tell you what we're doing. So first of all, we're going to begin with importing the dependencies. So we're going to import real time. We need Redis. We also need Flask. Okay. These are the requirements that we're going to import. After that, we're just initializing the name of the application. So here we're just hosting the database and we're connecting to Redis using the port number 6379. All right. This is the default port. Then we define the get hit count function. This basically returns a number of hits. So we're also setting the retries to five in case the page does not load. While all of this holds true, the incremented hits are returned. And if there's an error, then we have an exception. So we've also defined exception in case of errors. This function is basically to display the hello world message along with the hit counts. So this is the Python file. It's very simple guys, very understandable. You don't have to be a pro in Python to understand this. This is very understandable. All right. Now the next file you're going to create is a txt file which I've named requirements.txt. Okay. Now over here I'm just going to add my requirements which is flask and redis. So next we have the docker file. Now this docker file is used to create docker images. Okay. I mentioned this earlier in the session that you require docker files to create docker images. Okay, so first we're just setting the base image. So we're building uh, an image starting with Python 3.4. Now in this line, we're just going to add the current directory into this hyphen code path of the image. Then we're going to change the working directory to this path. 
After this, you're going to use a packet manager of Python to install the requirements that I mentioned in my requirements.txt file. Okay, so these two were the requirements, which is Flask and Redis. And then finally, we're just setting the default command for the containers to Python web app. Okay, so it's basically going to run my web app. Now we finally have a Docker Compose file. Like I mentioned earlier that a Docker Compose or a YAML file is going to contain all of the services. So there is web service over here and there is Redis service. So we're basically running two containers over here or two services over here, which is web and Redis. So now the web service is basically building the Docker file in the current directory. All right, the dot signifies the current directory and it forwards the exposed port 5000 on the container to the port 5000 on the host machine. Now the Redis service is basically using a Redis image pulled from Docker Hub. So guys, this was all about the files. You need to create a web application file, which is a Python file. And then you have a requirements.txt file. Then you have to have a Docker file and a Docker compose file to run both of these services. So guys, now that I've explained the various files, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run both of these services or both of these containers by using the docker hyphen compose up command. All right, guys, make sure to create all of these four files and you have to create them obviously in the web application directory. So if I do ls, I know that I have a docker compose.yaml file. I have a docker file. I have requirements.txt and I have a web app.python file. Now let's use docker hyphen compose up to run all of these containers. So it's just building from my docker file. So now it's installing my requirements over here. So now it's running my web app dot Python file. Now it's creating two services over here, which is web service and Redis service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the output by using Kitematic. So guys, I told you all earlier that Kitematic is basically a UI tool for Docker for Windows. So just left click on the Docker icon over here and here you're going to see Kitematic. Okay, click on it. All right, I think I'm facing an error. I'm just going to go back to my files and see if I have missed out any line. All right, so over here I have written RT. This is actually import time. Okay, this was a simple mistake. So let me just save this and let's try and run this again. Now it should definitely work. I'll just clear the terminal and we're going to use docker hyphen compose up. All right. Now, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the output using Kitematic. Here you can see an option Kitematic. So click on this. Now it shows two applications over here which are running. One is the web service and the other is the Redis service. Now, when you go to the web service, you can see the output over here. Let's click on this. So whenever you refresh the page, the hit count increases. So this is how the application works. If you keep refreshing, the hit count will keep increasing. So guys, this was a simple web application. And I also showed you all how to view this using Kitematic. Okay. So now you can see that this is green, which means that it's running. All right. You can also restart the container. You can stop it. You can enter into the container and you can run a few commands. Okay, you can use Kitematic in a lot of other ways. So guys, with this, we come to the end of this video. I hope all of you enjoyed it. And if you have any queries or any doubts regarding today's session, please leave them in the comment section and we'll get back to you at the earliest. All right. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!